All right, guys. I have Blitz game number thirty-four. <laughs> Playing the French defense. One new favorite black defense to e4. One new favorite black defense to e4. And close system. Oh, with the exchange. So this is the exact French exchange with me as white. <laughs> Since he lost that tempo. I think he did. Hmm. Not really in love with that move, honestly. <clears throat> Knight might be awkward on the queen side. Harass that guy right away. Um, basically, mm, thinking about the pin, I don't want to trade my good bishop for the bad bishop. This is a more aggressive setup, and if he moves the knight to f3 too quick, then I can grab a pin with my bishop, and then make things awkward on his king side. Castle, open file, bearing down on him, uh, rook's gnashing his teeth. Shouldn't be too hard to get the right moves here. And the queen comes out. I actually like that move. That was a good move by him. But I can play this because if, if he wants to play bishop takes f6, then I can play uh, bishop takes queen. And if he takes my queen, then I could take on g2. So the end of that's always going to be me trapping the rook. So at least I'm going to win the exchange. You guys know what I mean. That means I got another tempo. And I, I can expand. It's safe enough for me to expand on the king side. <clears throat> because he doesn't have enough pieces in play. Still got to be careful, but it's not even really that much to worry about. Queen g3 would block everything. Oh, so um, he would have had to move like queen back, really to a starting point about that rook. So don't don't forget these tactics that I was talking about either though. Queen queen queens are traded. I'm gonna get a rook. You can free his bishop, but then, <laughs> oddly enough, I'm getting a free rook, which I already knew was going to happen. So that's a sweet tactic to remember with these counter pins and queen queen trades. He's ending up down a rook. I knew it was going to be at least exchange. <clears throat> oh, actually, wait, he's down the exchange, sorry. Yeah, he's down the exchange. My bad, guys. It's early in the morning drinking my coffee. <laughs> oh, and you're up material trade. Hit <laughs> <clears throat> the bishop out of dodge. I don't think it's going to get trapped or anything. This is what I'm doing here in this position. <clears throat> I don't think it's the best move, but I just did it. Sometimes when you're up material, you're looking to follow your heart more than anything. And that's just kind of the way I want to win this game. Um, guessing. Oh, no, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. 
I thought he was going to move the rook up to threaten my bishop. Okay. That's better for me. It gives me more time to free the bishop and get on the open file myself. <clears throat> Wasn't exactly the best move, bishop g2. It's blitz, so it's kind of like, yeah, I'm going to save the bishop anyway, so I'll save it slow. Um, maybe something else would have been preferable, such as f5. And then once the bishop's threatened, bring the bishop to e4 where two pawns are guarding it. And then there's, if there's an exchange, then I have a pass pawn as well. That would have been better f5 before. Mm. What do you have here? Oh my god. What? a3. Seems kind of passive. <laughs> Blocks my knight's path to the king. But anyways, I can put my knight here. And it's great here because the bishop is on the light squares, never gonna affect it. I'll leave that thing on the long diagonal there. I'm looking at a um, king move to a dark square, <clears throat> structural move. Hmm. hmm. Now, make another structural move to get to the dark square. Um, I'm just going to go to the corner now because there's no rook. It's difficult to attack that square too. I'm always willing to trade bishops because the rook will shine against the knights. And then for, for a knight to attack there, it has to go to f2 and you know, knights get in there. Oh my god, you got the exchange back just because I moved the dark square though. Well, it is blitz, so not too worried about it. Honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm still up a pawn too. Let me see. Yeah, I'm up a pawn on, on the king's side. This is fine for me. I'm still winning. <laughs> it's funny that I dropped the exchange after all that bragging. <laughs> he must have heard. <laughs> they say there's spies everywhere. Big brother or something. Okay. We'll get into it now. Too deep. Activate my knight further. Put the king in the center and defend the pawns. Maybe we'll eventually get the trade bishops. And I'm up upon. It's a nice end game to win, honestly. Night end games. <clears throat> Thing about that is that they can't go too far. So if you get like two pass pawns, one on each side of the board, it could be a little bit better. But sometimes the king's guarding one and then the knight's guarding the other. Knights have actually less mobility than kings do. Um, kings can actually boss knights around. If they have mobility of 3.5, well, knights 3. <clears throat> From a shrewd technical standpoint. Let's get some material off. Get a pass pawn. And um, you can come up there, but I'm going to go up here. <laughs> My timing's better here. I'm blocking his promotion squares and my c4 pawn will ascend a lot faster than any of his because it's far and there's not going to be anything blocking it and I could take these if he takes time to eat the c4 pawn then we'll see the ascension of my a pawn see this is fine He thinks like this is like a book draw or something. Hell, actually, uh, me moving my king here is the winning move. Um, and then I can come down here. 
It's funny that he still thinks that I, that's a, this is a draw when my king's gonna eat all of his pawns. <laughs> Offering draws and stuff. He's like, you gotta take time to capture that pawn, man. So don't ascend. And now I can ascend one of my pawns. So now he moves, I move. Whichever side he moves to, I'll go to the other one. Basically, that was an easy game for me. Let's go with, um, it's the bird opening. Okay, and then I gotta stop this video.